we managed to complete our first uncertainty calculation. And also we managed to find the expanded uncertainty. And suppose now that we want to present this volume with its uncertainty as a result to somebody who is interested in this measurement. So let us see how to correctly present the measurement or an analysis result. So the presentation would be something as follows. First of all, we need to clearly say what it is that we actually measured. So the volume of the liquid that we pipetted, this is our measure and this is what we measured. We denote it by V. It is equal to and our nominal volume of the pipette that we use was 10 milliliters. Our uncertainty and here we put it as expanded uncertainty is 0 0.038 milliliters. We now close the brackets and write the unit. These brackets are needed to denote that the unit goes both for the uncertainty and for this 10 also. So that instead of writing milliliters two times, people use brackets and put milliliters behind there. But now this is not yet enough. You remember that uncertainty always is associated with some kind of probability. So we never can guarantee that the pipetted volume really is with 100% probability within this range. And therefore, we also must give some information to the people about the probability distribution. And in this particular case, we can write the following. K is equal to 2 and norm. And what does this mean? This means that we have calculated the combined standard uncertainty, multiplied it by the coverage factor 2, obtained this expanded uncertainty, and it means that we have a reason to expect that our measurement obeys the normal distribution. And if both of these are so, then according to the properties of the normal distribution, the person who uses this result can assume that the probability of the true value being within this range is roughly 95%. This is simplified and we will see later on that it is oftentimes more complex than this. But in the simple cases, this is a fully valid and useful approach. Whenever we present the result, we also have to think about the number of decimals that we give here. I've put here three decimals, both for the result and for the uncertainty, but I did not explain in any way why I picked this number of decimals. There are several conventions that are used so that there is no one single universal rule. But I will give you one approach that is fairly reasonable and usable in almost all cases. So whenever you want to decide how many decimals after the comma you have to give, you first start with the uncertainty. So step one is to look at the uncertainty. And with the uncertainty, you will have to look at the number of significant digits. And significant digit means the following. You start counting the digits from the left 
and any digit that is not zero is called significant digit. So we come here, zero, not a significant digit, zero, not a significant digit, three is a significant digit, and eight also, so we get one, two digits. So we have here two significant digits. And the general rule goes as follows. If the first significant digit is between 1 and 4, in the range 1 to 4, then we give two significant digits in the uncertainty. One, two. But if the first significant digit is the range of five to nine, In this case, we give one significant digit. So, and once we have managed to find how many digits we give with the uncertainty, and here it turns out that we give two significant digits, which in turn, in this particular case, means that we give one, two, three decimals, or three digits after the comma. When we have sorted this out, then we take the next step and we look at the value. The value. And here the rule is very simple. For the value, we give just as many decimals after the comma as the uncertainty has. Easy.